Advanced technology supports our modern way of life. New technology, upon creation, affects all areas of our lives, changing our thought processes and industrial framework. Recently, there has been a paradigm shift. What then is its driving force? Self-driving cars are drawing a great deal of attention. This new technology is having a large impact on many diverse industries. Car windshields now include information displays and advanced battery management is possible. Information terminals are also drastically improving. Artificial intelligence and search engines remove unnecessary steps, making life easier for the users. These technological innovations make more people feel safe and content. Analytical instruments make this technology possible. Honeywell Limited manufactures a comprehensive line of analytical instruments. Our products cover a broad range of fields from automobile exhaust gas analysis and air and water quality monitoring to blood assay and semiconductor development. Our greatest strength is that we manufacture all sensors that form the core of our analytical instruments at our development centers around the world. This enables us to engineer instruments used across different fields, such as our all-in-one monitoring system. This system combines precision analytical instruments to measure air and water quality. Such systems allow us to offer comprehensive solutions tailored to our customers' needs. Horiba also has a manufacturing advantage as we perform all assembly steps in-house. By controlling every process from procurement and inspection to shipping, we can provide fast shipping at a low cost. In order to respond to the needs of our users around the world, our products are organized into five categories based on their operation. Our matrix management system considers each country's market, powering our steady business growth. Analytical technologies are the driving force of the paradigm shift. New services are created by an interdisciplinary combination of advanced analytical technology. Honeywell Limited shines a light on tomorrow with advanced analytical technology, engineering and short delivery times. Good afternoon, friends. I welcome you all on behalf of Horiba. I'm Kunal Soni, the host for the today ELF webinar series, session three. Yes, ELF, uh, which 
stand for the environmental leaders forum and in this webinar series we are connecting more digitally to our customers by covering the different topics in last few webinars we covered the different challenges and solutions faced by sames and the process water monitoring applications today we have very interesting topic to discuss about elemental analysis of ambient particulate matter as we all know that about the heavy metals and the pm 2.5 and 10 but today we are going to talk more about the various elements which are present in the ambient air and which can be the hazardous to the human health also we are going to more discuss about the trace element to identify the contamination in the generation sources so i also welcome my colleague mr kyuhei nishidawa from horiba japan who will be the main speaker for today discussion to begin with uh, i will start first with the corporate introduction and uh, later i request uh, nishay san to cover the technical part followed by the question and answer session if you have any questions on the right side you have the chat box you can write you can ask your questions and we'll try to address at the end of the session horiba limited was incorporated in year 1953 our current chairman and group ceo mr asushi horiba we have a new factory in bivako prefecture which is called bivako e harbor where we do most of the research and development and also the manufacturing process for the gas analyzers we have invested around 10 billion japanese yen to this facility coming to the business segment horiba we are into five business domain first is the automotive test system where we have the solution for the emission measurement system and also we provide the solution for the engineering consultancy services the second business domain which is called process and environmental where we have the solution available for the ambient air combustion analysis or the water monitoring the third business domain called medical we have the analyzers into the ivd systems also the hematology analyzers in semiconductor we have the component called mass flow controllers which goes mainly into the different process applications the fifth business domain is the scientific we have the product related to the research and the different industry application for example elemental analyzer and the spectroscopy instruments in india we are having the presence across the country to serve our indian customers also the sar countries which include the bangladesh sri lanka nepal maldives we have the headquarter located in new delhi okla industrial area we have the medical reagent factory located in haridwar and uh, we do have the technical center in pune and uh, uh, we are coming up with the new facility in nagpur horiba india production and testing facility which is one of the state of art facility located in chakan pune in hitc pune which is spreaded across 10000 square meters area and even which is our state of art facility where we do a lot of in house manufacturing and production for example engine test bed from the automotive perspective uh, we do have the calibration center from the semiconductor department we have the state of art application lab from the scientific perspective we have the manufacturing and localization area for the process and environmental and the last photo you can see that is our manufacturing unit in haridwar as i mentioned that we are coming up with the biggest uh, investment in india which is going to come in the nagpur it is a 12 acre facility and you can consider expansion of our haridwar plant for the medical reagent manufacturing also we have planned to start here international training center as well as the refurbishment center
in process and environmental we have various product line which can serve the customer requirement whether it is ambient air whether it is the combustion or water we have the analyzer for the continuous stack monitoring which is called the stack gas analyzer we do have the portable analyzer for the stack and flue gas monitoring uh, we have the process gas analyzer which can go into the different application or industrial uh, sources another product line called ambient air monitoring we have all the complete package which is called ca qms whether it is a fixed type or it is a mobile type we can give the complete solution considering the different gas parameters including pm 2.5 10 and also today we are going to talk something different what are the other elements in third category which is called water analyzers we have the online water processing system to measure the different parameter in the effluent water monitoring which comes under the process or even we have that solution for the regulation area under the cpcb and different pollution control board guidelines we have other small instrument that is called non contact thermometer also we have the radiation monitor and the glass checker so this gives you some idea what are the product line we have in the process and environmental segment now i request my colleague kyohei nishidawa san to take it over from here over to you nishidawa san thank you kanal san hello everyone thank you for joining today and my name is kyohei nishidawa nish for short and i'm from horiba limited japan international sales department experienced market research and marketing formulation and development especially for the US uh middle and south america and south east asia for the past years and now i'm doing a product specialist of px375 i hope everyone is safe and healthy against the coronavirus situation right now and in japan everyone stays home and i'm also working from home today and i hope i don't get any interruption during the webinar okay the topic of the webinar today is elemental analysis of ambient particulate matter as a product specialist i have been involved in marketing market research including looking for what kind of pm researches are being conducted around the world what kind of challenges researchers have and i have been also involved in developing or supporting research projects with the cutting edge technologies that Horiba has. And based on this experience, I'm going to be talking about global research trends, challenges, and solution with the technologies. This is the content list of today's webinar. In my webinar session, I am going to talk about brief explanation of PM 2.5 I will cast a spotlight on metals in ambient. We will learn challenges of conventional analysis methods and then I will introduce solution with new technologies. And at the last at the end of the webinar, I'll be also talking about applications and case studies of new solution. Let's start. Firstly, What is particulate matter or PM 2.5? Particulate matter is a mixture of solid and liquid particles suspended in the air. Coarse particles have a diameter of 2.5 micrometers to 10 micrometers. They are relatively heavier and thus tend to settle. Um, pollen is an example. Now, PM 2.5 refers to particles have diameter less than 2.5 micrometers which is more than 100 times thinner than the human hair and thus remain uh, remain suspended for longer time pm is formed as a result of for example fuel combustion to pm 2.5 in the air an exposure to pm 2.5 has short term and long term health impacts short term includes irritation in the eyes nose and throat coughing sneezing and shortness of breath 
because of the size of PM 2.5, they can easily reach to respiratory organs. A prolonged exposure to PM 2.5 can cause permanent respiratory problems such as asthma and heart disease. This slide is showing images of PM from different generation sources. As I said, one of the causes of PM is industrial activities such as fuel combustion. And if you take a close look at the PM from different facilities, you can see how much different they are in the size and the shape. Actually, the difference is not only the size or the shape, but the chemical composition of each PM is also significantly different. The images are the examples of different chemical composition of two different samples. PM are composed of elemental carbon, organic carbon, iron component, inorganic element, and so on. As we have learned, it is well known that PM 2.5 has health impact. Thus, people are caring about PM 2.5 concentration. Recently, attention is being paid to chemical composition of PM 2.5, especially inorganic elements, in other words, metals. Now, the question is why metals in air is a particular interest of researchers. Firstly, they are hazardous to human health. For example, according to WHO, cadmium exposures are associated with kidney and bone damages. Cadmium has been also identified as a potential cause of lung cancer. Lead exposures have developmental and neurobehavioral effects on infants and children, and elevate blood pressure in adults as well. Secondly, since different generation sources emit widely different metals, they, they serve as trace elements to identify uh, contamination generation sources. Uh, the approach to identify the contamination generation source is called source apportionment. The table on the right side of the slide is an example of source apportionment approach, which is called chemical mass balance, CMB for short. In CMB method, you will have measurement data of metals in air at the location and based on, uh, based on the, uh, the element uh, sorry, based on the elements which are present it at a certain concentration level, assumption of generation source is made. For example, metal indicators for oil combustion are vanadium and nickel. Another example is titanium, iron, copper, and antimony for brake dust of vehicles. And even the type of the generation source is the same. For example, two neighboring steel plants. Each facility emits unique elements at different levels. For example, because of the difference in impurities included in the raw materials that they use, which specify different contribution to the PM generation for each facility. Now, I guess you'd like to know what actions are being taken in regard to the fact that metals are hazardous and they can serve as trace elements. Here's an example of metals monitoring network programs and regulations of the United States uh, Environmental Protection Agency, US EPA. I brought up uh, LET as an example and the descriptions in colors are a class name for monitoring network, program, or regulation. For LED, uh, more than four classes are applied, and I took uh, four out of them. Now let's look at the one by one. The first one in red is parameters subject to 40, uh, the
for TCFR appendix F for short, are those known to cause cancer and other serious health impacts. Uh, the Clean Air Act requires the US EPA to regulate toxic air pollutants from categories of industrial facilities. And the next one is urban air toxic pollutants. Uh, there are 187 hubs that US EPA, require, US EPA is required to control. And from these hubs, US EPA identified 30 uh, parameters that pose the greatest potential health threat in urban areas. So the parameters these classes are applied are monitored at the stations based on specific criterion. The last one, but not the least, is chemical speciation network trace elements. US EPA established a PM2.5 chemical speciation network consisting of speciation trend network sites and supplemental speciation sites meant for below objectives. The assessment of the trends, the development of effective state implementation plans, and determination of regulatory compliance. The development of emission control strategies and tracking progress of control programs. Aiding in the interpretation of health studies by linking effects to PM2.5 continents. Characterizing annual and seasonal uh, spatial variation of air levels. As of 2016, uh, the PM2.5 chemical speciation network includes about 50 speciation trend network and about 100 state and local air monitoring station. Moving on, uh, this slide is showing the metal parameters being monitored in the United States based on different classes. Uh, in the previous slide, I only talk about lead, but obviously there is a lot uh, more other elements being monitored. Besides lead and cadmium uh, that I already explained, USCPA is also reporting chromium has respiratory effects and increased risk of lung cancer. And also arsenic as the cause of the gastrointestinal uh, effects, uh, anemia, uh, peripheral Neuropathy, uh, neuropathy, skin le le lesions, and increased risk of lung cancer. And likewise, different metals in ambient have different health impacts, and thus they are being particularly monitored. As I explained, PM is composed of many different components. In uh, in order to analyze them different manual methods are conventionally used. For metal analysis, ICPMS is a conventionally used manual analysis method. However, uh, the conventional analysis method includes several challenges. Firstly, it requires high cost for analysis, including professionally skilled labor costs, the expensive lab instrument, or the outsourcing analysis contract with the lab who has the facilities. Number two, uh, for the conventional method, a uh, high volume sampler like the image here uh, collects the sample and you have to transport the sample to the lab. And then the sample goes on the sample preparation and finally analysis is conducted in the lab. Due to this procedure, it typically takes about two weeks from sampling start to analysis data completion. Number three, due to the complex procedure and the cost, typically only one analysis data in 24 hours is available. Thus, it raises difficulty in capturing rapid outbreaks of unique element concentration. Uh, number four, human errors and sample condition change over the transportation uh, results in un uncertainty and a bias of the analysis data. And all these 
uh, uh, challenges are the, actually the challenges that all product developer faced when he was doing PM research at the laboratory and he developed the product to make uh, researchers life easier. So here's Holiver's solution. The instrument is called PX375. It is a semi-continuous ambient metals and mass monitor. First solution brought by PX is automation of sampling and analysis with X-ray fluorescence technology, XRF for short. And not only XRF, but also beta ray attenuation technology is equipped in the one compact, compactly designed 19 inch uh, system. Now, online monitoring of PM mass concentration and metal concentration is both realized. Since it is online monitor, sampling and analysis are all completed at site. You can set the measurement frequency shortest at 30 minutes, which enables capturing rapid outbreaks of unique element concentration for given time period. And flex, flexible operation condition of restrained power consumption of 400 voltage ampere supports a wide range of applications. And a sample on the PTFE filter with a breathable uh, reinforcing layer of non-woven fabric, which is horrible pattern filter, can be used for manual analysis comparison check to. So here's horrible solution. The instrument, uh, sorry, the, the slide is showing the detectable elements and lowest detection limits regarding the detect detectable limits, you can uh, technically detect from aluminum to uh, uranium, excluding uh, rare gases and elements with uh, atomic number smaller than 13. Uh, please refer to the details of LDL later once you receive the presentation material. Okay, so this page is showing uh, the general specification of the instrument. For mass analysis, beta ray attenuation is used. Measurement range is from 200 to 1,000 microgram per cubic meters. Repeatability is plus minus four micrograms per cubic meters. For metal analysis, energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy is used. You can set element analysis time, in other words, X-ray irradiation time from 100 seconds up to uh, 10,000 seconds. Detector is silicon drift detector. Um, this standard reference material is used for calibration and other standard materials for optional elements. Sample image is observed with a CMOS camera and the image is also saved for each sample. For the common specifications, both for mass analysis and uh, uh, metal analysis, PM sampling time is selectable from half an hour to 24 hours. The size is 430 millimeters for width, uh, 560 millimeters for depth, 285 millimeters for height. And the weight is approximately 49 kilograms. An operation is based on dedicated PC with windows. Data is saved as CSV file, uh, file format. And external connection is Ethernet and USB. Okay, this slide is showing the external view and internal view of the instrument. It is, as I said, a 19 inch width, and you have Sampling in depth from selection of TSP, PM10, and a PM2.5. And when you open the front door, uh, you will see the filter tape installed uh, for sampling. And at the right side, you will also find the beta ray attenuation unit for a PM mass concentration analysis. Also, right next to it is XRF unit for metal concentration analysis.
maybe now. The slide, uh, this slide is showing the in, uh, internal image of PX. And I'm going to explain the measurement cycle. Firstly, the particulate matters in ambient are taken from the sampling head and only the PM smaller than PM uh, uh, 2.5 micrometers are brought to the sampling filter as it, go, as it goes through the separation unit. And the sample is accumulated on the filter. While the sample is uh, being obtained, uh, PM mass concentration analysis is conducted with beta rate attenuation. And once it reaches to the set time, the sample on the filter tape is advanced to the next position. And PM metal concentration analysis is conducted with XRF. There's also CMOS camera installed to uh, check the sample condition remotely without opening the instrument. From this slide, uh, I'm going to talk about applications and case studies. This is the overview list of applications. Um, the instrument is, for example, used for advanced air quality monitoring station, where there is already station monitoring gaseous parameters, and a PX is to be additionally installed. Uh, regarding source apportionment, we already learned uh, uh, CMB, chemical mass balance, uh, as one of the uh, uh, methods. In regard to automotive research, the autom uh, automotive manufacturers are developing and launching more and more electricity vehicles. And some of the countries already set the target timeline to absolute uh, vehicles with fuels. And all this trend is to achieve the very strict requirements of PM reduction of vehicles. However, the remaining question is, fuel combustion is not the only PM generation source of vehicles. Uh, for example, tire and dust, uh, sorry, tire and brake dust are also source of uh, PM. And they are made of different materials uh, so researchers in automotive industry are also paying similar interest to the instrument. You can also monitor stock metal emission and some customers install PX on the ship and utilize for marine research. Okay, I'll be covering the details of applications in coming slide. Okay. Uh, the the application introduction is going to be advanced step by step. And the first case study uh, on this slide is a pretty manual way. The analysis data of PX is saved as CSV file format in the dedicated PC. And you can quickly make graphs like these. They are showing correlation mapping between PM 2.5 mass concentration and many different metals. Y axis stands for mass concentration and X axis stands for metal concentration. And R square stands for correlation factor. And among these mappings, you can easily find out sulfur is showing the highest correlation factor to PM mass concentration. Now, one of the examples of assumption you can make around is a plant emitting great amount of SO2 is highly contributing to the PM generation around the area. The example of such application is, for example, coal fire uh, facility. Uh, the next case study is advanced research of pollution generation mechanism and transboundary air pollution by the Ministry of Environment Japan. The situation was the recent PM 2.5 concentration in ambient in Japan has been greatly improved overall by various countermeasures in Japan and East Asia region. 
However, in urban areas and Kyushu area, which is uh, southwest of uh, Japan Island, there are still areas where environmental standard is not well achieved. And a PX is utilized to contribute to further advance uh, the PM generation mechanism study and a source apportionment of PM 2.5, which helps to specify following counter actions. And the challenges of the previous research was the limited number of analysis data obtained by manual analysis, which was, which was obstructing advancement in PM generation mechanism study. In the solution we provided with the PX was firstly, mass and metal monitor provided further detailed information in breakdown, reflecting activities of different applications for contamination generation mechanism. Secondly, high time resolution monitor provided trend information reflecting different activities in different time in day. For example, conventional analysis, analysis method only gives you 24 hour sampling data. So even though there is a significant increase of a specific metal in short time, it is averaged and it is not recognized. On the other hand, with a high time resolution monitor, you can see the effect of vehicles, particularly during rush hour, for example. As a result of installation, PX has been providing reliable monitoring data with a good relation, uh, good correlation with the manual analysis. The graph on the left is trend of measurement data of manual analysis and the PX. The graph on the right is correlation between the manual analysis and PX. As you're seeing, PX is showing good correlation with the manual analysis. The next application is fence monitoring and visualization of metals and mass concentration together with a wind speed and wind direction sensors. Uh, this, so for this application, uh, the steel plant was located by the bay and there is a residential area down south and there is a highway in between also. And the situation was the residents had health damages from PM and reported to the regional government. Um, in such a situation, the authority impose, imposes penalty for pollution and ask for countermeasures to the you know, plant operators. But the challenges for the steel plant were there are so many PM generation sources nearby around. Uh, vehicles running on the highway is also one of the source. Thus, it is difficult to clarify the true contribution of the steel plant operation to the health damages. And solution of visualization by combination of data of PX375, wind speed, wind direction, and geographic data, advanced assumption of uh, contamination contribution of a particular type. These are the mappings of integrated data for a given time period. The, the graph at the left above is the mapping data of wind speed and wind direction. It is telling us that wind was coming more frequently from south and southeast during the, uh, the given time. And the wind speed was a little bit stronger from southwest. And next, uh, the right above is for mapping of lead and iron, the length of the colored area for the particular direction indicates the concentration of the metal from the direction. As you can see iron 
is clearly coming from the direction where the steel plant is operating. That is also indicating strong effect from the steel plant. But other generation sources from different directions are also contributing. Now let's look at the sulfur and the PM2.5. They are showing contribution from any direction similarly. So they don't seem to work as trace elements of the steel plant uh, PM generation. So in this uh, uh, application, uh, lead and iron are used as trace elements. This slide now shows trend graphs of PM2.5 concentration and metals concentration. Sulfur and iron are separated in a different graph just because the scale of the concentration is far from titanium, chromium, copper, or lead. And what you can see from the graphs is the peak of sulfur is correlating with uh, PM2.5 um, basically all the time. Uh, and they are commonly observed regardless of a specific facility operation presence. On the other hand, um, particular elements such as lead and iron are expected as the contamination, particularly uh, from the steel manufacturing facility. Based on the result, uh, the operators of the steel plant can possibly set the trace elements as red and iron, and now they can explain the true contribution of the plant operation to the health damages with a breakdown of components of particular matter. The next application is mobile air quality monitoring station. Uh, especially in rapidly growing countries, there are special challenges in environmental issues. Along with the rapid economical growth, PM concentration surges, and the PM causes serious health impact, which increase medical expenses of the country. But at the same time, economical growth also cannot be sacrificed. There is obviously necessity for investigation of PM complex generation me mechanism. Um, and the PM is already being monitored and public awareness is much improved. But uh, identification of PM generation source is not well achieved, which is very important to implement contamination reduction programs. It is known that ambient metals monitor is helpful for health studies by linking effects to PM2.5 components and also for source apportionment. But there are so many sites need to be monitored and the budget or uh, labor with professional skills is limited. For such situation, here's a solution uh, Hollywood provides. The complete system of PM mass metals monitor and all air pollutants monitors such as NOx, SO2, ozone, together with data logging reporting system comes in the mobile truck. In case you cannot install multiple fixed stations, you can move the mobile, uh, mobile monitoring station to multiple sites. And you can define the monitoring time period for each site uh, which should be long enough to secure the effectiveness of the research, by the way, and use one mobile station for multiple locations. And also, Horiba is one-stop supplier of the complete system. Okay. Importantly, of course, PX is installed in the mobile system. And conventionally, XRF technology required very strict temperature control within around uh, three degrees Celsius fluctuation, which is hard to duplicate for application like mobile station. 
but as a, a instrument manufacturer of many kinds of optical technologies, having long history in wide industries, we made operational condition flexible to accommodate uh, uh, 15 degrees Celsius fluctuation. Furthermore, thanks to the restrained power consumption of 400 voltage ampere, PX can even operate with a small portable battery for even more flexible use. And please be aware, you still need to avoid direct sunshine and too hot or too cold environmental, uh, environmental condition. The last application I am going to uh, uh, talk about is source apportionment with a positive matrix functionalization, PMF for short. Uh, this uh, PMF analysis is software-based data analysis model, which provides you PM generation contribution ratio of different types of generation sources for a given time period. You need to have adequate amount of data for many measurement objectives to obtain reliable results. USCPA provides PMF analysis software for free on the internet. And you can later check how it actually works at the link. At a Hollywood conducted research with a PMF analysis, we used our own Hollywood air quality monitoring station, which installs PX and air pollution monitor AP370 series for NOx, SO2, and other gaseous parameters. This slide is showing the results of the PMM analysis. As I explained, PMF will give you several factors of contamination generation sources based on the measurement data, including metals, gaseous parameters, wind speed, reaction. And you can uh, take the factor as a category of a contamination generation source here. And I wrote two factors for uh, this slide. Now let's look at the factor number one. X axis is uh, a lot of parameters of metals and gaseous parameters. Left y, uh, left y axis stands for concentration of the parameter. Uh, right y axis stands for percentage of the total composition of factor one. So if you look at the red square for SO2 and CO, which indicates percentage of the total composition, you can find SO2 composes around 40% and 30% for uh, CO. This is telling you that uh, factor number one is the contamination generation source that CO and SO2 has significant contribution. And the possible source that PMF will give you is visco or oil combustion activity. Now, let's look at the trend graph below. It is showing PM generation contribution of factor number one, which might be visco or oil combustion. It is hourly trend graph, and you can see when the vehicle or oil combustion is highly contributing to PM generation. Likewise, let's see the factor number two in the same way. Factor number two has great percentage of copper, and the possible generation source is mining or smelting. And let's look at the trend graph. Different from factor number one, copper outbreak is seen only during specific time period. Here, you can make assumption like uh, the smelting facility is only operating during the time period, or there was some malfunction of treatment system at the smelting facility during the specific time. And since you have geographic data too, analysis will even give you, uh, even give the hint of what, which facility it is. Finally, let's look at the situation in India, especially in Delhi. Delhi gets a lot of PM generation effects. Fewer combustion plants, such as factories, power plants, and by fewer combustion often leads to PM generation due to inefficient burning. And more and more here. Another effect includes cross-border pollution from other areas by open burning. 
And since Delhi is located in uh, in inland, there is no sea breeze that blows suspended PM. And thus, it helps PM to suspend in the air for longer time. To, prove the situa uh, to improve the situation, a joint study is being conducted with Center for Science and Environment, Delhi Pollution Control Committee, and Horiba. The three months of the pilot study was conducted by use of PEX at the multiple locations in Delhi and national capital region. The images are photo of the kickoff meeting. The multiple locations are monitored as described in the timeline at the bottom. And the PX was installed at the existing air quality monitoring station, temporary, and a move to another and another. Okay. So now I'm very happy that new technologies is on, already introduced in India. And uh, the, I heard the research uh, result is going to be uh, ready shortly. So let's wrap it up with a summary finally. So today we learned PM is from many different generation sources and they hazard us differently. Metals in PM also work as trace elements. They are monitored as hazardous elements and trace elements globally. New technologies available for advanced research. And it is used for many applications thanks to the flexibility. And finally, for people who are listening to the webinar today, maybe now it is your chance to get your hands on the technology. Thank you very much. And I will ask my colleague Kunal to take it over from here. Thank you, Nish, and uh, to all the attendees for your attention. So I would like to start the QA session. I can see a lot of uh, questions in the chat box. We'll try to cover as much as possible here in this platform. Rest, uh, we will give you all the question answers and uh, presentation by email at the end of the webinar. So uh, I can see one question came uh, in the beginning that what is the 30 posts uh, which was there in the beginning slide? So I would like to explain here the HAP, which refers to the 30 pose, which is basically referred to the urban air toxics. And uh, if you see through the Wikipedia, you can understand that under the urban air toxic pollutant, there are 30 pollutant which we cover. For example, benzene, uh, also it covers the beryllium compound, ethylene oxide, formaldehyde, and a lot of other like hydrazine and uh, hexachlorobenzene. So we are talking about all these 30 poles which can be covered under this uh, PX monitoring or elemental monitoring. The another question uh, from Mr. Jain, whether it is possible to analyze 40 elements simultaneously? Yes, sir, uh, we can do the analysis of 40 elements simultaneously, but we have to make sure that we do the calibration accordingly. Like prior to that, we had to do the calibration curve by using the standard sample for all those each components which we are targeting. And normally we use, uh, if we talk about the XRF technology, uh, it is the EDXRF, energy dispersive X-ray fluorescence. And uh, we use the NASG traceable standard sample here to do the calibration of the different element by using the known concentration of the standard. Uh, one more question from Mr. Saurabh that how we calibrate mainly the PM source. So just to give you some clarity that uh, this PX itself only can measure the mass concentration for the sample which we collect on the filter tape. And uh, this, this is calibrated the mass standard sample. For example, PM 2.5, the PX we need to install in the cyclone which is basically the separator of a particle with the size of 2.5 micron. This is just for example. Uh, one more question from uh, someone that Mr. Ram Shankar that can we do the elemental concentration analysis? Yes, sir, definitely that we explained in the presentation. So we can do the qualitative as well as the quantitative measurement the range what we have mentioned from aluminium to uranium in the periodic table. Uh, from Mr. Jain, another question, uh, what is the 
XRF based whether it is the energy or wavelength. So yes, sir, it is the energy based only. We are talking about the EDXRF, the main principle. Uh, one very interesting question, uh, even Nishida Vasan, that uh, customer are interested to know whether we can use this technology for the continuous stack monitoring. So would you like to answer here? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, there is one case where uh, it is used with the uh, uh, for a stack monitoring application, but the sampling uh, units was prepared by the customer uh, for the application. I think definitely we are exploring uh, uh, with our R&D team on this application. Yeah, yeah. OK, so I, I request all of you that definitely our R&D team is been working in the direction and we'll get back to you with more clarity on this application. And uh, another question that what is the unit which we measure from PX375? So. For uh, particulate matter, the concentration we measure in the microgram per meter cube. And uh, for elemental analysis, we measure mainly in the NG per meter cube. So these are the two units we are uh, referring here. Uh, Mr. Jain, one question raised. Uh, does it have the GPS facility also? I think that is a very interesting question that if we take this PX to the different location in the mobile AQMS or something, so would you like to add something here, Nishida Vasan? The PX itself does not equip such a uh, sensor, but you can uh, easily uh, uh, additionally add to the station. OK, so it means it is possible. So we can connect externally by using some external device connecting with the USB mode something. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, from Mr. Abhijit, another question, whether it can measure the silicon or not. Yes, sir, if you refer our periodic table, what are the elements are possible? So yes, we can measure the silicon. Sorry, we are running short of time, but I want to cover a few more questions here. One question from Mr. Kashish. I, I request uh, Nishida Vasan to answer on this. The question is the correlation between the manual sampling and the PX375 was shown to have the good correlation for the lower mm -hmm. concentration. How about mm -hmm. the correlation for the higher concentration if it is around 900 ppm to 1200 ppm? 900 ppm to 900 ppm to, uh, are you talking about the concentration of the, uh, the, the PM mass? Yes, PM mass, you're right. Mm -hmm. Uh, to get the good correlation. Yes. Is correct. there any is there any uh, specific uh, elements that uh, the attendee uh, brought up the question in his mind? Because, yeah, because you know, I think, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Just to give you yeah. more explanation, because in some slide we explain about mm -hmm. the correlation referring the lower concentration. But uh, the mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. the main correlation that if we have the, the challenges in the winter, this concentration of the PM can increase. If it goes mm -hmm. around uh, 900 ppm or above, then uh, mm -hmm. how this PX uh, can help getting the accurate correlation? Basically, uh, you know, the co correlation comparison uh, against uh, manual analysis method for high concentration is less uh, less hard. So, uh, but I don't know about the, you know, limitation. So, in order to clearly uh, answer to the question, I, I need to uh, elaborate uh, separately. OK, thank you. So we'll mm -hmm. get back to you with the more details. Uh, Mr. Ronald have one question, which is, I think, very important from the operational cost point of view. Uh, mm -hmm. Nishida was an again to you. Uh, the question is that in this instrument seems to have a lot of uh, uh, waste of a uh, large amount of filter tape due mm -hmm. to the large distance between the sampling point and the XRF measurement. Mm -hmm. So what is your answer on this? Uh, how we can reduce uh, uh, the waste of the PDFE paper which we use? OK, so the distance between the first measurement spot for mass concentration uh, to uh, the X-ray analysis spot is 100 millimeters. 
and you also have the selection of uh, two, uh, 20 millimeters uh, uh, as shortest uh, for ad filter advancement distance. So the di distance, you know, in between is 100 millimeters. But if it's okay uh, to wait for, uh, you know, some hours, you can also set the distance, filter distance, uh, sorry, filter, filter advancement distance 20 millimeters, and you can save the cost by one fifth. Okay, I think that it sounds good that uh, we have the flexibility to reduce this uh, distance and uh, definitely reducing the cost of the operation point of view. Uh, Mr. Peterson, I have one question. What is the voltage we use for the tube? So I think that I can answer. So we use a tube voltage here, which is uh, 15 or uh, 50, 50 kV. So these are the two options available. And uh, another question is, uh, I will try to cover one or two more. What is the analysis time for uh, elemental analysis? So just to answer here that uh, normally our standard time is 1000 seconds, but we have the flexibility that we can select the time interval, for example, 100, 200, 500, up to 10,000 seconds. So if you recall the uh, one slide where Nishida Watson tried to explain that about the lower detectable limit, if we increase our time interval, then we can get more accurate result and uh, can go further below in the LDL point of view. And uh, one specific question on the connectivity part from Mr. Satyajit. So how to transfer the data to central pollution control board? So yes, uh, it can be connected to the standard uh, DES software. And if we talk about the CA, QMS, so whether it is through digital or analog communication, we have the complete solution. We can transfer the data to the pollution control board. OK, and uh, I, will, I will cover the last question. Again, it is coming that uh, can we use this system for the steel industry? I, I would like to hear from you, Mr. Nishida Vasan, your view uh, for using the PX in the steel industry. Uh, yes, depending on uh, you know which uh, something point you are referring to, but uh, obviously, as I talked, uh, you know, as I explained during uh, today's webinar, one of the application was. Uh, uh, you know, fence line monitoring around steel plant. So, uh, yes, the detectable element by the, you know, the instrument PX375 include elements, you know, emitted from, uh, uh, you know, typically from steel plant. So uh, the instrument will also help the steel plant operators to uh, improve this, you know, PM generation mechanism study or reduction uh, countermeasures. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I will cover uh, last question. Sorry, we are already running short of time, but I request uh, you can see the email ID and our contact detail on the screen. So you can connect us anytime, even our team will connect with you. If you have more queries and more requirement of the application side, and also, if you have any requirement for the demonstration of the PX system, we are happy to serve you. Uh, the last question is from Mr. Ramashankar that is it possible to transfer the data while any type of monitoring? So I think that is a very interesting question and uh, I can answer on this. Yes, uh, it is possible. Uh, it is a continuously uh, transfer, uh, basically the continuous cycle of the data transfer to the DS software which we used, whether it is connected to the CAQMS system for the online monitoring. And also the live data can be transferred from the analyzer on the real time basis. So if you again recall the slide from Mr. Nishidawa, he explained about the using this PX system in the uh, AQMS application, whether it is a fixed type or it is a mobile type when. So we can put the system inside the same setup and uh, we can do the real time monitoring by using the PX. So along with the PM 2.510, we can get all other elements which you want to measure. And we have very good response for this. We are doing some studies also in India to understand what are the hazardous element presence in the ambient air. 
which is helping us to understand for the human health safety point of view. So that's all. Uh, again, thank you very much, all of you. And uh, we'll send you all this presentation and the QA by email. So again, thanks a lot and uh, for your valuable time. Be safe and uh, be at home. Thank you very much, all of you.